Well, hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. I'm just doing my Omnilux contour red light. I've been doing this really consistently for the past several months. The red light is helpful for calming down inflammation and it's also helpful for boosting collagen production. And I have seen a visible difference in just firmness and plumpness of my skin. I used this mask in the past and likewise saw an improvement. People ask like, how does this compare to the in-office treatments? It's not as powerful, but it's a great option for like maintenance. And you definitely can see some improvement in just like fine lines, irritation, inflammation, overall skin complexion. It doesn't generate any heat. All right, now I'm just gonna do a little of the six peptide booster. I've been enjoying this. Just put it on my face, around my eyes. Sunscreen of the day is going to be the Pecom Water Barrier Sun Cream. Uh, I just finished my coffee. I'm out here in the sunroom, hence the echo. And in case you were wondering, when I sit out here, <laughs> I've been sitting on a cooler because I have yet to find a little bench to go out here but I saw my eyes peeled because remember when we were online shopping together at Ch that Cherish website and I found that adorable wicker love seat? It would have been too large for out here, plus it was really pricey, so I didn't end up going with that. But I would like some kind of little seating to put out here, so that's where I'm at. <laughs> I'll set you guys in the bucket of hats. <laughs> I have all my sun hats out here. I'm gonna go run some errands later today and I think I'm gonna take this little one or maybe I'll take my Brittany hat. I should get a cowboy hat. This one's good though, cause like you can mold it. Anyway, I wanna go to Home Goods today and see what the Halloween decor situation is like there. All right, here's my outfit of the day. This little blue dress, isn't it cute? And I've got my little gold pin and my pearl drop earrings of course i'm not gonna wear my slippers out but that is what i'm wearing today i filmed a video for you guys today on top nine uses for benzoyl peroxide you didn't know existed there's a condition called progressive macular hypomelanosis that a lot of kids teenagers and adults develop may not even realize the habit it goes away usually in about five years spontaneously but it's actually related to the acne causing bacterium cutibacterium acnes and essentially it just creates these little light colored spots almost you know tricks the person into thinking they're developing vitiligo but it's not see vitiligo is a depigmenting condition whereas hypopigmentation is just less pigment. So with vitiligo, eventually the spots that are affected, there will be a zero melanin there. So it is porcelain white, bone white. Whereas with hypomelanosis, it's just lighter color. Thank you oh my so gosh, much. look at this giant pumpkin, Martha Stewart. <laughs> I'm here at Home Goods, and they have a ton of Halloween stuff out. Isn't he adorable, or she? A little broom. And they have a little candy corn, which this is what I'm talking about. No gnomes. I love it. Ooh, look at the little haunted houses. They light up. Oh, they light up green. They have a little Halloween. He's festive. We put him out in the yard. He's got a little bell and a little bat. Does he light up? I wish you could put like a light in there. So many pumpkins. Home Goods is not holding back on the Halloween teapots. He 
These plates are fun. Some Thanksgiving love snuck in there. Rarely do you see that. Oh, I spoke too soon. Oh, I love these plates. All the festive fall mugs. Here. I have a lot of peanut stuff this year. Oh. Home Goods has stopped carrying these teacups called Portobello Designs. They always had them and they would have like different seasonal patterns. They were so festive and they stopped carrying them like they used to get them like clockwork all the time for your iced coffee lover they also have one with pumpkins I don't let myself buy these because they just end up floating around in my in my cabinets and getting on my nerves and they have some festive Halloween table linens. Oh, how sweet, the little pink ghosts. These are nice, I love the mushrooms. Very pretty. Look at these Hello Kitty ceramic reed diffusers. <laughs> Adorable. I have some nice little decorative ghosts. Oh, I like that blue and white pumpkin. Here in Target, I just filmed a video. Um, this sweatshirt looks kind of comfortable. The Blue Mermaid Surf Shop. Famous Ford motor cars. Um, you guys know what Ford stands for, right? Fix or repair daily. I can say that because my first car was a Ford Taurus station wagon, and my gosh, that thing was a persistent headache to say the least. I mean, grateful that I had a car, don't get me wrong, but um, I don't miss it. Although it was a very comfortable car in the winter. I'm just drawn to the strawberry shortcake. Isn't she cute? Uh, it was a very comfortable car in the winter in Colorado. The heater worked really well. That's one thing I remember about it. And it also had this little jump seat in the back. Do you guys remember those being popular in station wagons like back in the 90s? The little like extra seat back there. Yeah, I had that, never used it, but. If you were wondering where's Waldo, well, he's here at Target. I don't know what what has happened to Target over the years. What is this for a cameo on Sesame Street? Look at this thing. It's like a sack. <laughs> this is kind of cute. This little sweatsuit skirt. Well, guys, I've finally done it. What, you might ask? I have finally set my clock to the right time. Yes, I have been delinquent on that, and I know what you're thinking. Yeah, daylight savings time was many months ago. <laughs> Do not overestimate me when it comes to my clocks in my car, clocks in general, because I have probably not corrected my clock not just since the daylight savings most recent, but we're going like two years back. It was probably two, three years back. It was probably the last time I corrected 
my clock to the current time. And for a lot of people, that would drive them berserk. But I find a sense of peace in not knowing what time it is sometimes. I find that, you know, when I'm frazzled, I'm in a hurry, that not knowing what time it is actually helps me stay calm and carry on. So, but I finally caved and decided, you know what, let's just get this, let's just get this on track. The other reason I'm always delinquent in doing it is that I find you, you have to be, the car has to be on, but it's best obviously to not try and correct the, you know, set the time when you are driving. And I always forget, like I hop in the car, I turn the car on and I back up and I'm ready to go. And then it's like, oh, I need to set the clock. Then I get where I go, I'm going and I forget. So it's been, it's been a long time coming and it doesn't bother me, but all that to say, I am, I am on my A game. Clock is set, sun is shining. Getting some more steps in and I'm actually gonna read my book here. Uh, yeah, the mom is not growing on me at all in this book, but man, it's really good. And I'm getting into the actual horse whisperers uh, backstory, so I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I made such a big deal the other day about how oh, I never went through a horse phase or anything, but man, I just really feel for some of the horses in this book. I just, I don't understand anyone who could be cruel to an animal. I just, I don't get it. Cruelty to children and animals, it's, it's sinister and just pure evil. But anyway, I'm gonna get to reading this. Coming in with my Tretinoin, how many of you all believe that if you have sensitive skin or rosacea, you cannot use tretinoin, xerotene, and dapolene. How many of you believe that or have come across something that suggests you shouldn't be able to use those things and that instead, you know, you should use this gentler alternative? Well, that's a myth. People who have rosacea, which is like the epitome of sensitive skin, I mean, characterized by burning, stinging, flushing, blushing, with contact on the skin to like pretty much many things. Kind of random, depends on the person some things more likely than others. But because retinoids cause a lot of irritation in the beginning, they can be very hard for people with rosacea to tolerate, but it does not mean they are off the table. In fact, topical retinoids, such as adapalene, which you can buy over the counter here in the US without a prescription, can actually be very helpful for rosacea, as can benzoyl peroxide. I know, mind blowing. Now, benzoyl peroxide also is notoriously drying and irritating, but um, newer formulations of benzoyl peroxide slow release the active, small sizes, and help cut down on the irritation from benzoyl peroxide. Turns out they can be tolerated by people with rosacea, and it really can be a game changer, not just for the red bumps that are full of pus, but the benzoyl peroxide can actually um, help normalize some of the microbiome of it have a positive impact on the skin microbiome of people with rosacea. That's newer research that's coming out because with rosacea, a big part of it is dysbiosis. Bacteria on your skin are just, you know, skewed. You also have all of those demodex mites, which, you know, people freak out about the demodex mites and they're over, you know, they're, they're, there's an overabundance of them with rosacea, but they have a little bacteria that lives on them. And that little bugger is probably a big contributing factor to the inflammation and issues that people with rosacea or just demodicosis, overabundance of demodex have. But adapalene and benzoyl peroxide can help with issues related to demodex, likely because of the antibacterial effects, the anti-inflammatory effects, and benzoyl peroxide is keratolytic, so it can help break up, kind of dry, stuck together, skin cells exfoliate, cutting down on the real estate for demodex to thrive. So the downstream effect of that is, you know, is helpful in terms of cutting down on rosacea severity. But it's like all a matter of, can the person actually tolerate these topicals? Well, adapalene is one of the easiest topical retinoids to tolerate. It's very gentle in the grand scheme of things. Um, and, you know, that being said, it can be irritating nonetheless. There are ways to minimize the irritation. Check out my video 
on how to introduce a retinoid such as adapalene with no irritation. I give a lot of high yield tips and tricks above and beyond just like introduce it slowly every other day. Um, so check that out. But yeah, it definitely can be helpful. Wow. All that yammering aside, I think I told you guys this last week. So I purchased this Youth Thymol toothpaste because I needed toothpaste. The packaging is beautiful. This is made in Korea. It's got fluoride, so it's like sweet, you know. And if you, you're new here, for like the past year, two years, I've been solely using kids' toothpaste because I was talking about how the flavors are a lot less likely to irritate or be contributory to perioral dermatitis, canker sores, etc. None of which are issues I have ever dealt with, but I discovered the kids' flavors are just a lot more enjoyable. Well, the packaging on this sucked me right in. I mean, how chic is that, right? It's so chic. And the pink, the font, everything about it, just in the metal tube, love it, love it, love it. However, whew, that is a painful, painful toothpaste to use. Burns your tongue and it dries out your mouth. Like, brush my teeth at night, of course, wake up the following morning and it's like, my mouth is so dry, it's like sticking, my tongue is like sticking to the side of my mouth. I've got three tubes to go through. That one and two more, because it came in a three pack. Word of warning. That is my, you know, I love Korean skin. It's odd because Korean skincare is known for being gentle. Their toothpaste is like, well, at least that one. I shouldn't judge all Korean toothpaste. Speaking of which, when we went together to that Abisu Life store in the Galleria Mall, and I think also in um, Tesso Life, gosh, I'm dying to go back there. Did they not have a bunch of interesting looking toothpaste, Korean toothpaste? interesting flavors. I might need to go back and give those a try sometime because y'all know I, you know, I've got a skincare channel. I'm a dermatologist. Skincare is like what I do, but I also have a fondness for all things oral hygiene. So I've been trying out something new behind the scenes. You guys know I've recently fallen in love, discovered I should say, and subsequently fallen in love with the La Roche-Posay Glycerin Skin Protectant, the Cicaplast Gel. It is amazing around the eyelids. I'm trying something else. So I purchased the Monistat Shaping uh, Relief Powder Gel. This is a dimethicone based skin protectant. Speaking of which, the Cicaplast Balm from La Roche-Posay is also a dimethicone skin protectant, which I love. But I was curious to see how this performed around the eyes. This is great for reducing chafing. So I've been trying it out and it's not bad at all. The dimethicone, you know, it's a skin protectant, so it helps limit penetration of irritating things. It reduces transepidermal water loss, and it definitely has a smoothing effect. It also has like a pore blurring effect. This has a definite powder finish to it. It's not as amazing as the glycerin skin protectant around the eyes, but it's definitely impressive. And if you have eyelid irritation, this is a great thing to use around the eyes to protect eyelids from irritants that drive barrier issues and flares of eyelid dermatitis. I mean, eyelid dermatitis is a really broad category, but this is a great option. I also suggest plain petroleum jelly, Vaseline, but admittedly, that can kind of melt a bit and get kind of greasy and oily around your eyes and just be like not pleasant. This is great and it's under seven bucks. Uh, like, I mean, it's meant for chafing, so you can put it under your arms. As a side note, if you get underarm irritation from shaving or from antiperspirants, put this under your arms. It's pretty nice. Like it already feels better. Even though my armpit felt fine, and now now it feels a lot smoother. Like like there's better glide and slip. It's kind of like when something's a little loose in a piece of furniture and you're kind of ignoring it, and then all of a sudden you get the idea in your head to tighten a screw, and it's like wow, this is much better. Yeah, underarm lube, but this is not greasy at all. So th this has like no greasiness to it. No, it, it, it feels like a powder finish, absolutely. I've heard from the makeup people that this also works well as a makeup primer. I don't wear a foundation, so I couldn't tell you that, 
All right, y'all, I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much for making it to the end. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.